What's up everyone? I'm Chester. And this is Rob from Lincoln Park. And you can catch us all week on MTV Home Base. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. Actually, um, we've we've probably well, I've personally had like a lot more fun here than um, than anywhere else. I think the set coming up in a, in a close second would be Australia. We had a really good time there too. But uh, it's just that we've been welcomed so warmly here by our fans and also by the label and um, the people who are putting on the show. It's just been really nice and, and really friendly here. So. I like it a lot too. Just, uh, <laughs> same thing that uh, like Chester said. It's just been a really warm welcome here. And uh, we went out and had a really good dinner last night. We had Kobe beef, um, and that was really, really good. I think that's the best uh, steak or beef I've ever had in my life. Definitely amazing. It feels. It's just. It's almost like. Somebody, I'm just waiting for somebody to pinch me and wake me up, you know? But um, it's, it's something that we never expected. And, and I think that, you know, we were, we were shocked, like thoroughly shocked when, uh, when we released the album in the States at how well it did from the first week. And it's just maintained a really good um, steady, you know, flow of sales. And, and then, you know, with the release of the album all across the world also and, and how well it's been received. Um, in other areas of the world, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of blowing us away. You know, it's almost surreal.
The video for One Step Closer was our first video we ever shot, and um, we actually shot it in LA in this abandoned subway station that was shut down in the 1950s. Um, it was like 70 feet underground, and the, the air was thick down there, and we couldn't really breathe very well. And it was just nasty down there, so, <laughs> and we actually were stuck down there for like probably like 20 hours or something, just ridiculous. And uh, it was, it turned out to be, you know, a good video for our first video. I think there was uh, these like monks and stuff hanging from the ceiling, and uh, we don't know how they got there. They were just like kind of <laughs> were there when we got, you know, we're doing we the video. Up. So <laughs> we said, oh, you can stay and and, and chill for the video, but. Uh, it was cool, Chester got to hang upside down. That sucked. <laughs> it looked like his uh, head was gonna explode after. It felt like my head was gonna explode. That's like, really, like, don't ever do that to yourself. There's people who buy those machines that they hang themselves from the ankles, you're out of your minds. It's the worst <laughs> thing you could ever do to yourself. I don't understand it. But, yeah, overall, I think it was a good video just showing like the performance and the energy of Lincoln Park. And uh, this is our video, One Step Closer. What's up everyone? I'm Chester. And this is Rob from Lincoln Park. And you can catch us all week on MTV Home Base. Watch how the moon sits in the sky on a dark night, shining with the light from the sun. The sun doesn't give light to the moon, assuming the moon. Well Chester and I are the most important, you know, in the band, so. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, well, we've got uh, we've got a bunch of people in the band, there's six of us all together. Um, Mike Shinoda is also another vocalist, and both both he and I uh, handle all the all the melodies and, and, and rapping and things like that. Um, we have a guitar player named Brad Delson, um, and a uh, bass player named Phoenix. Brad and Phoenix met in college together, and uh, unfortunately Phoenix had to live with Brad for three years of his life uh, underneath him. And uh, and uh, we have a DJ. His name is Joe Hahn. Him and uh, Mike Shinoda met in the Art Center, and uh, Robbie and Brad and Mike all got together when they were in, in high school, and uh, that's pretty much how it all came, to, came together. Well, Rob is, um, is a real genuine person, you know? Um, he's got a big heart, and he also can beat the skins like no other person I've ever seen. Um, he's quite possibly one of the best drummers I've ever, I've ever seen, and just a really nice guy. Yeah. And Chester, better be careful. He's, well, first of all, he's beautiful. Now Chester is <laughs> Chester is also a great guy. I love I love being in a band with him. Um, as far as like his skills um, vocally, they're just they're far beyond anybody anybody I've ever worked with. Thank you. And. Um, you know, he's a really, really passionate person. Like anything he gets involved in, he goes, you know, 150 percent, which is, which is great because it sets a great tone for the rest of the band and for all of us to work together at that, you know, with that kind of ambition. Thank you, Rob. Very nice. <laughs>
Um, well, Crawling was our second video, obviously, because we've only made one. And uh, um, it was a different experience for us because uh, we really had a good concept of um, a really nice storyline. Um, whereas, like, One Step Closer was almost so obvious that we wanted to do something different for it. And, uh, and it was also a different way of shooting because <clears throat> we did the entire video basically in front of a green screen, which... Um, it allows the director to uh, to put all the digital effects behind us. So we kind of had to pretend like we were in this, you know, icy cavern or something like that. And it was it was fun. And we also had um, a chance to like work with different camera speeds for the first time. So the majority of that video was shot actually in double speed. So we were like, it it, it turned into like a thrash song. <laughs> Which was kind of fun, and then you watch it back, and you're, it's like we're all in slow motion, which is like a really neat effect. Um, and the song basically um, deals with emotions of frustration and, and feelings of, uh, of insecurity within yourself and dealing with the problems that are, that are um, happening in your life. And this is just uh, one scenario that could be uh, related to the, the emotions in the song. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun to shoot. So check it out. Hope you enjoy it as much as we do. What's up, everyone? I'm Chester, and this is Rob from Lincoln Park. And you can catch us all week on MTV Home Base. I think what it, well, I don't know if this is absolutely true or not, but I. My opinion on that situation is, is I think that um, it's important to have lyrics that people can, can relate to, um, and also to have good melodies and, and a strong rhythm section and, and all that kind of stuff. All of that is really important into making music that people enjoy listening to. Um, because people enjoy music for different reasons. You know, um, for, in, in, in Rob's case, you know, he, he's a, more of a beat and, and rhythm oriented person who listens to music and in my case I'm more a um, uh, melody, melody driven person and lyrically driven person so um, we try to include all of those different aspects into what we do and uh, really try to push ourselves to be the best at that and I think that's what people really kind of catch on to hopefully in our music. Absolutely. Um, when, we write, when we write songs, it's a little bit different than the um, typical way of writing songs. We spend a lot of time in uh, recording our songs as we write them, um, rather than like sitting in hour, you know, long jam sessions that are almost endless. Um, and that way, we can really hone in like the guitar parts and the, and the drums and add beats and things like that, and spend a lot more time. Mike and I can spend all that wasted time that usually happens in, re in the rehearsal studio, we can spend working on melodies. And I think, you know, we probably went through a hundred different variations probably for each song on melodies. You know, sometimes it happens like that and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it, we, we try to do that so that it's more efficient and when we actually get into the rehearsal space, we're, we're just kind of 
walking in there with the complete song that we're just going to learn how to play, pretty much. And um, that's worked out really well for us, as far as our writing is concerned. We've actually kind of figured out that I actually have almost like a, a, just a sickening kind of pattern. It's almost obsessive compulsive in a way. I go through, I go through these phases where I, I, I shave my head like you see it now and then it grows out. I usually bleach it and then get sick of the blonde, dye it all a bunch of different colors. And I get sick of the hair and having to do it every day. I get sick of you know having to spike it all up and uh, I shave it down to a mohawk and then I go through my different colors of the mohawk and then uh, back to phase one, which is the shaved head. And it is a sick cycle that keeps reoccurring. Yeah, it just so happens that like the first two videos happened to like hit him, like when it hit the blonde hair and yeah. a lot of like the press photos and stuff. So people don't realize that that was not like a long period of time that that hair yeah. was like. Yeah, it actually came and, it came and went uh, several times between each one of those situations. <laughs> it just was odd that it always happened. So, get used to it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> in my skin. What's up, everyone? I'm Chester. And this is Rob from Lincoln Park. And you can catch us all week on MTV Home Base. <laughs> Biggest change. Um, not having to get up at 9 o'clock in the morning. 
<laughs> um, every day. You know, that was like before I joined this group. Well, even you know when I when I actually joined, all the way up until um, we started touring and, and we made this record. You know, I I worked very hard and and uh, you know back in Phoenix. I, I, I maintained a job that I worked 45 to 50 hours a week, all, and on top of that, putting in about an additional 30 to 40 hours a week with my music and trying to maintain a relationship was pretty much what I was used to. And then now, kind of almost having not a lot more free time, but just a lot more time to like enjoy what I'm doing and enjoy all the different aspects of, of what's happening in my life is the biggest change, I think, for me. Yeah, and, I mean, just being on the road, I mean, just being, you know, away from, uh, away from home, from friends and family, and all, and all loved ones at home, is a, that's a big change. You know, everything is really, really fun out here, and we get to do like, do so much and see so much. But at the other end of that, it's like there's a lot of people missed back at home for long periods of time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I think like old. We'll be old. <laughs> <laughs> we will be old. Anyway. Ah. <clears throat> the, like like a band like the way we've always been like like from when we first started we kind of like grew up as a band like on the internet and talking to a lot of our fans and so even before we even got to go out on a tour we had already had like some kind of contact in a relationship with our fans so by the first time we like drove off across the country we got to you know Florida which was you know thousands of miles away from our home and we got out and we had like some people there we knew that knew our music and we just kind of started like that and we'd always kind of hang out you know after the show or before the show and meet our fans and stuff and I hope that you know 10 years down the line we're still you know, able to do that, able to like know our fans, you know, the fans that have been there from the beginning and the fans that have kind of come along as we've grown, um, to be able to just know them and have that relationship with them because that really keeps us alive as a band. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool to actually like come back and see the same kid that was, you know, in New York at the Conan O'Brien show, the first, you know, whatever, <laughs> hanging out and uh, 20 years down the line, you know, still be able to know them and like have like a relationship with them. That's like really. I think that that kind of also sets us apart from a lot of different acts is the fact that we really do spend a lot of time with our fans and it's, they almost are kind of like shocked when we come back to the town and we remember them and I think that it's just going to like become a big family so hopefully 20 years down the line it will just be like a big family reunion tour you know with all of our fans I think that'd be really cool. Well, we're staying at the. <laughs> so come see us. Actually, um, we just you know all we want to say is is uh, we're sorry that you couldn't make it out this first time. Um, uh, we had no idea that that so many people would want to come see us the first time out. Um, and hopefully next time we'll be able to to catch you and, and meet you and say hello. So just keep your ears peeled for the next time we come to Japan which shouldn't be too long away, and, uh, and we'll see you then. <laughs>